Hi, I'm Katie Nasser. I'm a K to six elementary art teacher outside of the Boston area. And today I'm going to be talking to you about infinity cards, a form of paper engineering. Paper engineering is a lot of fun to use with students. It involves a lot of design tools and skills, and it involves taking a sheet of paper and folding it and constructing it and engineering it into all different kinds of forms that move and are 3D and kids are really engaged with them. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I form the infinity card and then I'm gonna break it into the other piece that I like to do with the infinity card, which is to bring in mindfulness, which I think are really important skills to teach to your students. But first let's talk about how to make the infinity card. Okay, here's an example of one that I made. And the reason it's called an infinity card is because it folds and folds and folds, and it just keeps going. There is an infinite amount of times that you may fold this card. So now I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how to make the infinity card. You need four sheets of paper that I have cut into four and a half by nine pieces. I use a, a heavier cardstock rather than your typical drawing paper. It's best to have a cardstock that will withhold the folding um, and the gluing and the constant motion that these cards are gonna have. And your kids are gonna really fold them a lot, so the heavier paper is really better. The first step is that we are going to create a fold in each paper. And in order to do that, we're gonna create a guideline to help them fold accurately. This is um, a tracer a guide sheet that I also give each student, and this is the same measurement, so that same four and a half by nine. I like to talk a lot about making sure that they line up their guide with the edge of their paper so that they're accurate. In paper engineering, as you can probably imagine, accuracy is important. It's important that their folds all go to the same spot. It's important that they take the time to slow down and make sure that things are lined up before drawing. And I like to use the scenario of, of like a building engineer, how I wouldn't wanna live in a house that a building engineer just kinda said, oh, I think that line kinda goes there or that piece kinda goes there. That would make me a little nervous. So in their paper engineering tasks, they should be trying to achieve that same level of accuracy. So once they get all their guides drawn, they're gonna fold. And again, this is an area that a lot of kids struggle with, getting accurate folds. The line does help them. I suggest they do it in pencil so that it can be erased later. Um, but you do want to try to cue them to take their time, make sure that the edge of their paper folds right up to that line. Make sure that the two ends meet in the middle and don't overlap. That will affect their cards later on as well. If they have time, um, they can fold the paper back the other way as well. This does fill up, um, my classes are about 45 minutes, so this first day we spend making the infinity card before I even introduce the mindfulness part, and it does fill that whole time up. But while some kids are waiting for the next step, because some will be done early, have them fold it back the other way and give the card a nice crease. This will help with the folding of the infinity card later if those creases are in place. It's not totally necessary, but again, if they have the time, it's not a bad thing to do. Once all their cards are folded, then we're gonna set them up on our table to get ready to glue. So I model on my desk how, I, how the students should set their cards up. Two cards are gonna go horizontally with their guideline lined up two cards are gonna be going vertically. So they're gonna kinda look like this. When we put the glue on, it's important that it only goes in one spot on the papers. So I have them mark off with an X or like a little circle where that spot should be. And the spots are in the bottom two corners on your bottom paper and the top two corners on your top paper. They need to really practice some glue restraint here. You know your students and they often can very quickly 
pour that glue onto the paper, but they really only want a little dot of glue. A little bit goes a very long way. And then I also um, prompt them to use their finger and just kind of spread it into a little circle around that X. I kind of use the scenario here of not letting the glue ooze out like your jelly and your peanut butter sandwich um, so that they're in control of their glue. Once the glue is in place, they're ready to start forming the card. So they're gonna take one of the side vertical cards and lay it right over those X's. Now they do move a little bit when you're starting to put them into place and it's okay, you can slide them right back once they move. Your, your students might get a little frustrated, just let them know that it happens um, and that it is okay and, and they can slide them right back into place. Now you want to make sure that these two folds don't overlap because um, that will affect your folding later. It's okay if one line is showing and one isn't. Um, these are going to get erased. Those lines are really just for your folding, so it's okay if they show up in the card at this stage. So my card is now done. It's ready to dry. I can flip it over and kind of look right here. It's not totally lined up. I can trim that later. That's, that's okay too. Um, it's really that you're checking to make sure that these pieces don't overlap and these pieces don't overlap because that will affect your folding later. And then that's it, then it has to dry. So I usually do this on the first day um, before we even talk about the mindfulness part so that they can make their card and let it sit and let it dry and put it off to the side. Um, and then the next day is where we talk all about the mindfulness parts. So I like to start out with a video about what mindfulness is. The key things I want the students to take away are that mindfulness um, talks about slowing down, being aware of your surroundings, um, being focused, being centered. And we also talk about how that can help you in school. It can help you learn better. It can help you be a better listener. It can help you be a better friend. So all of those things set the stage for why mindfulness is important. And then I talk about how this card is gonna be a tool to help them be more mindful. So not only is it a work of art and this really cool paper engineering thing, but it also is gonna be a tool they can use to help them. In um, mindfulness, deep breathing is an important um, tool. It can help you feel centered and focused. And some things that help children with breathing are breathing exercises. Um, they're called breathing shapes. And there's a whole bunch that you can do. These are some that I introduced to them. So each of these shapes is a breathing shape. And for example, if we're going to use the square, students start at the bottom corner. They take a deep breath in, out, in, out, and move around the square. So each of these exercises, students can follow with their finger or with their eyes and follow along as they're taking a deep breath. So this one can be called the crazy eight or the infinity sign. And in this one, they're kind of taking a breath in and then out as they move all around. And again, these breathing exercises help them to stay focused and centered and calm their body when they feel like they have a lot of anxiety. We put these shapes right into their infinity cards so that they have them as a tool to use as they're flipping through their card. And they might say, oh, the, the square breathing, and they can follow along the shape. So that's one way that I have mindfulness built into these infinity cards. They get to choose what order they want the shapes to go in their card, and they trace them right onto their card before adding their artwork. The second way is through guided imagery. And guided imagery is kind of like a story um, that takes you through a visual journey and it helps you be more relaxed, more centered, more focused, but also stimulates a lot of creative ideas and um, imagination. So I like to read a guided, um, a guided imagery story with the students. And from there, they develop an idea of a safe place that they feel really good in. So after the guided imagery, another thing I like to do is have students create a planning sheet to organize their ideas. This sheet is gonna help them 
think and put together those images and pictures that came into their head during the guided imagery. So they start out by writing down anything related to the senses. What did they see while they were in that guided imagery? What did they feel? What did they hear? What might they have smelled if they were really in that place? Um, that helps them hone in on what their beautiful relaxing place is. That becomes the theme for their infinity card. Then I have them break up their theme into four mini sketches. So these are like their thumbnails, these are their practices. So if their most beautiful place was the beach, what are four images that are gonna be part of the beach? So maybe, the ocean, a seascape, shells, fish, the sand, things like that. Um, they would break all into their four images. Once they get those ideas developed, they're ready to put them into their infinity card. And that's kind of what mine was, the beach. So I have my stones. I imagine my feet with the water pouring over it or, or washing over them. Um, this one with the waves on the side, it's ready for another image to go inside. And then this last one that's kind of like a seascape. And these really can become really nice works of art. They can bring in a lot of drawing skills. I introduced colored pencil skills with layering. I introduced watercolor pencils. We talked about marker using different um, values of markers to create um, highlights and shadows and details. So, you know, this is a nice arts integration project because it brings in many art skills and many of those art elements, but it also brings in that mindfulness piece, which as we discussed is so important for your kids. I hope you try this out with your students and I think that they will love them as much as mine do.